Thank you, everyone. Once again, I think we have come to the end of our meeting, but uh, if you could just spare another five minutes, uh, that would be much appreciated because we can't uh, end the meeting without, you know, really thanking the Herculean efforts that some colleagues and individuals have put in who you may not have even come across in terms of on video for the past few days. So, um, well, first of all, you've got both Evelyn and Philip here. They have been very, very shy throughout the meeting, but they were the one who actually looked after the science side of things in the program and, uh, you know, dealing. Yeah, exactly. So we owe them a great deal of gratitude and they were well supported by over 15 um, individuals who actually helped with the reviews of the abstracts and, and really, you know, stood up um, whenever their help was required. Um, in some ways, I found that when it was 2020 at the start of the pandemic, um, when we were told that we couldn't have an in-person meeting, we had a shock and, and we turned into complete virtual meeting. And I thought that was going to be challenging. But in some ways, actually, because we were going into unknown, we just tried and we found out that it worked. This year has been actually much more challenging. And I'll tell you why, because we really harbored the ambition that we could organize an in-person meeting this year. And we just could not bring ourselves to the point where we could say, yeah, time has passed. We really need to take a decision one way or the other. And that, you know, that level of uncertainty, I think played a much bigger role, at least that's what I felt in, you know, saying, okay, we do need a ELS. It has to be virtual because we just couldn't get the logistics, you know, um, guaranteed in time. And, and then that, uh, translated into all sorts of other challenges. So um, given all that, I think what we have achieved today is just remarkable. I mean, we had a three days of meeting without any cancellation, without any issues. And, and that tells me that actually there's another person who is just sitting behind all this, uh, you know, Ricky, who has single-handedly um, almost managed everything from his end. So we, we need to give him really a round of applause. Thank you, Ricky. Um, I don't know how many beers we owe you, but we do owe you many beers. Uh, and, and of course, our colleague, Christina Gibbs, who couldn't be here with us because sadly, uh, throughout the pandemic, she avoided everything and then um, COVID eventually caught up with her. And so she's um, recovering. That's good news. Um, I've been in constant touch with her and um, she's getting better and I hope that she gets back to her full energy but despite of that she has been asking how the meeting is going and what can she do from her side so um, I think the, this is what makes ELS is special this is this is not a commercial platform uh, this is a community platform and and I think that uh, virtual meetings are here to stay um, they really showed us that they can make such meetings affordable. I mean, you have heard people talking from all the way from South America to India um, and, and even beyond in this meeting. That might not have been possible for an in-person meeting. So clearly, going forward, we have to maintain the virtual element in any meeting. And, and of course, it plays towards the sustainability topic that everybody is now worried about, you know, with the climate change and, and, and all of that. Um, and it's time efficient because as some of our chairs found out, they were really getting worked up that couple of speakers had not turned up. But we knew that actually they would just turn up when it's their time. That's OK, because everybody is busy. And, and, and that may be one downside of virtual meeting is that you are distracted very easily because you've got multiple things you think you can do at the same time. So, so I think these are some of the pluses, but maybe some of the minuses. To me, the biggest minus of not having an in-person meeting is the ability to have extended conversations, have the networking opportunities, especially for those who are finishing their PhDs, who are actually starting their career, to find new opportunities, to, you know, to, to really feel the buzz that you feel in these kind of meetings. So um, I am really um, willing to put um, whatever is required to return to an in-person ELS in next year. And on that note, I'm going to share with you just one slide to, to tell you what and when uh, it might happen next year. So uh, how do I share that if I go in there? 
and you will see I should have the, uh, there we go so uh, so this is not a um, how do I go to full screen here Ricky you need to help me I'm command in, F come on there there we go that's mm. the globe and F what did you say the globe symbol and F. Globe. That's the function. There we are. Yeah. yeah. So um, again, this is not um, a, a secret or anything. This is what we actually promised to the community in 2019. And this was what was going to happen in 2020. So I think it is just right that when we return after the pandemic to an in-person meeting that we go back to um, those who actually offered us uh, the support, and in this case, uh, University of Padua has agreed to actually host us next year, um, provided everything uh, remains as it is right now, or even better. And, and our colleague uh, Luca Pocelli, who actually originally led this, um, you know, organization initiative, um, would contribute for my NFN. So, Luca, if you are online and want to say a couple of things, perhaps that people should know about Padua and the next year's ELS, then please do so. Look I need to activate this microphone. Okay, yeah. you should be able to do it. Yes, yes. Thanks very much. Well, nothing more to add to what Mayesha said, so as you see, it's 13 months from now, so that there is plenty of time to make all the, the, the arrangements and to get ready. And uh, with the support of uh, ASI, the Italian Space Agency, and the other nodes uh, uh, of SERVI in, in Italy, we, are, we really are, are looking forward to, to meet you all in person uh, in Padua. So see you in June uh, next year. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Luca. And please note the dates. Uh, these dates are to be confirmed, but they have been um, agreed upon uh, based on uh, our local hosts availability. And given that now in person meetings are going to be a bit more complicated to organize than before, we had to go with what was, uh, you know, workable from their side. So typically ELS takes place around mid May but this is the time period that works for Padua. So it's a little bit later than usual, but hopefully um, it will not interfere too much. And with the 13 month notice, I think we can uh, start making our uh, our plans. So, so that's what I have um, for you today. Let me just um, stop sharing the, my screen. So go back. Okay, and I think I hope I have not missed anything, but um, just to say that uh, thank you all once more and thank you for uh, staying with us 15 minutes uh, past the hour. Um, you have your Friday for tomorrow to actually decompress and uh, uh, you know make use of the uh, weekend after that. And uh, good luck and stay safe, everybody. And thank you, Mahesh, for all your help and your hard work. My pleasure. Thanks, everyone. All right. Take care. Bye for now.